You know, it was once remarked that if you isolated and t- and spoke to, you know, the average voter in American society, you would lose very, very, very quickly all faith in the intelligence of the American public. And unfortunately, tonight, I am actually finding that to be the case. Here, I'll go over why. You know, Donald Trump appears to have won the 2024 election, and that isn't, you know, that right there. You know, that's not where I want to go with this. That's not, like, proof that people are dumb in this country, but their reasoning for it is dumb. So I went, you know, I did a little bit of soul-searching to figure out why this you know, actually happened, and I looked that into it, and, you know, as somebody who voted for Kamala instead, I, I looked at it, and I um, discovered that inflation and the economy were actually pretty high on the minds of the American public that actually voted this way, and I couldn't help but think to myself, well, wow, that's a, I have the exact same concern as you, like, I'm, I'm I, I, I don't differ, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I, I, where we differ is that I know that it's stupid to think that voting for Donald Trump will fix that problem. You know, that's where we differ. Like, he, what what appears to have happened is essentially everybody got big mad about the price of things down the road at the grocery store. And so they took their anger out on, you know, the one person that was in charge of the whole country, you know, rather than a whole slew of other other factors that, you know, were maybe there was somebody to blame for all of it, but it wasn't the fucking president. <sighs> I just can't. I can't with people. I, the, the amount of stupid that's out there. All right. Let me get into this. All right. The only sane, sensible way to look at, you know, what the effects of each candidate will be on the economy is to look at the, you know, the the policy platforms that are proposed by both candidates. You can't, you, you can't just go down to the grocery store, you know, like what we did instead of evaluating the policy platforms of both candidates and then coming to a rational conclusion about who was better for the economy, you know, instead of doing that, because that would actually take intellectual work, heavy lifting. We took the shortcut, which was just, you know, grocery price is bad. Therefore Trump, you know, and, and that I, I get the amount of stupid that, that had to go into that. Just make like, my brain is bleeding. Like there are brain worms, People have brain worms. The electorate has brain worms. These people are so stupid. They should not be allowed to vote in the first place because they're too incompetent. They should be stripped of it. You know, we can't have you voting. You're too stupid. And not only are you too stupid, but your stupidity is dangerous and it is it is hurting the whole country. It's, it's bad for the whole country. It's bad for the health of the economy. And all of it. I mean, you skipped every step of hard work and heavy intellectual lifting that you needed to do to come to a solid conclusion about, you know, who would be better for the economy. See, I look at the policy platforms and I'm with every economist who lined up and signed the paper that said, you know, Trump might be talking about the bad inflation going out there in the streets and everything and pointing to a legitimate problem. But, you know, his policy solutions will make the problem worse. Like, you know, the thing about inflation is that it's come under control at this point. It's, 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 you know, it's not, it's there, it's, it's, it's evident, but it's not super, super bad. I mean, I, I, like, it could be worse is what, where I'm going with this. Like, it really could have been. I mean, I, I, you know, I just recently experienced a bit of a spike of, you know, what we had to pay at the groceries ourselves, you know, but Let's look at what Donald Trump has proposed policy-wise, and let me explain to you. He wants to raise exports on Chinese goods to sixty percent. He wants to raise import, you know, the the cost of all imports, you know, tariffs on all imports of ten to twenty percent. So, you know, that's bad. That 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 will not have good effects on inflation. You know, it you. Likely because America produces most of its food, it's not going to you know. 
you know, right there, that's not going to be an issue. But, you know, we import the United States might be like a gas producer and everything. And it, it very much so does produce shale gas. But we um, one fact that I did discover when I did do research on this issue, when I did the actual heavy lifting on that one to understand it was that, you know, our reactors like heavy crude, you know, they don't they don't like this light, sweet, you know, crude that's coming from um, shale. And so what happens is the United States exports all of its oil to, you know, countries that are better able to refine it into gasoline. And then we import this Saudi oil that we, you know, refine into gasoline. I, I discovered that fact. So it meant, you know, the United States could drill and drill and drill as much as it want, wanted, but the United States was never going to see a drop of that oil on its markets. You know, it just wasn't going to happen. You weren't going to get a diesel out of it. You weren't going to get anything out of it, you know, no matter what your preference was as far as gasoline, you know, like you <laughs> any form of your fuel, you weren't going to get it out of that shale gas because, it, you know, our refineries just weren't equipped for the job. They weren't set up for it. They don't like that processing that stuff. And I'm not sure they can't, but we, just because a system can technically do something doesn't mean it's good for it to do it because it would be costly to do. You know what I'm trying to say here? Like there are countries that are better able with better refiners to ultimately refine that stuff at a more cost, at a, at a more at a more cost effective way into gasoline than we are. So, you know, our producers like the heavy crude. That's just a, you know, ongoing reality of the, of the system, you know, so I looked and I saw this and, you know, I, I, I cringe fest for, United States, like, just God, I mean, I'm sorry, most of you, like, like, I don't mean to come across as an asshole, either, I mean, I don't, do, do you think that, like, it gives me any pleasure to think of, like, my, you know, like the, the majority of my neighbors and the people who actually pull the levers and trigger, like, I'm not coming at this from a perspective of, like, ha ha, look at those idiots, you know, it's, Oh my God, you know, please, you know, save us. Like these, my people know not what they do, you know, sort of perspective. Like, you know, that's where I, I'm coming from on this. And, you know, when I, when I look at, when I look at what Trump is doing and saying and, and, and everything, he's, he's talking about that, but he's not only talking about that. He's also talking about getting rid of all the immigrants, you know, and, if you know if you know anything in, about like immigration, for one thing, like when when the jobs came back, a lot of them went to immigrants, you know, in in our country because of the fact that, you know, uh, well, I mean, there just there just weren't enough people who you know were, looked like me, shared my skin color, and everything that wanted to do the actual work that was on available, and a lot a lot of it went into shit like, you know, hey, I'll mow your lawn, I'll do your landscaping work, and it also went into picking crops and everything. And the one thing about that is that most white people don't want to do that stuff. You know, like, they, they, they want to work in air-conditioned environments, you know? Like, like I get, I get, I get it, I get that um, there are some of us that are willing to do landscaping work and everything. I've seen white guys go out and do businesses like this and everything, but they're not like, you're you're not that much of the market. You're like that much of it. You know, you don't have a huge share, you know, of market share as a white person doing landscaping work. Like you're not, most of us don't want to do that stuff. You, you know, <laughs> like that's just a, a reality in the system. You know, I'm sorry to those that do, but most of us don't, you know? And, and, and so Anyways, like, you know, th those people are making it cheap, you know, for our food. They're keeping costs from being ballooning even higher than they, they would have, you know, they would have otherwise. You know, I mean, yeah, they're they're up and everything. The prices are up. But, you know, there are still supply chain bottlenecks that are going on, you know. And, 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 and off the top of my head, one that I've, I've come to understand very well is the potash shortage and the nitrogenous fertilizer shortages that are going on because of the fact that Russia and um, Ukraine were responsible for the export of the majority of that stuff. And so that that's going to have a negative impact on, you know, at least produce at the grocery like that. That's that's going to be, 
you know, and, and everything that's refined out of produce is also going to be impacted by that. So, you know, the, 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 the reality is that there's an ongoing fertilizer shortage owing, owing to the war in Ukraine. Like, you know, that's just a, you know, been a thing and everybody's tried, been trying to figure out new different ways to, you know, uh, fertilize our crops at this point. Like that's been, you know, something the world's been going through for quite a while now. But, you know, I look at this and Donald Trump is basically talking about ex de deporting most of the people who are actually doing the work right now with the immigrants. And, you know, he's also talking about, you know, deport. he's also talking about raising a tariff on, you know, foreign imports to this country, which, you know, we now get a lot of our stuff from abroad and, you know, not, you know, coming from the up and coming generation of millennials. I mean, we get our entertainment from abroad. I'm, I like anime. I, I, you know, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I, I get like quite a bit of my actual entertainment from overseas. I, you know, it's been a thing my whole life. I mean, you know, a lot of these games, you know, were originally developed by Japanese developers and then brought over to the United States and ported, you know, like that, that's, that's been a thing for a long time now. So it's like, you want to, you want to, you want to make that more expensive for me? Like, oh God, please, fuck you. Like, like, this is not going to help, you know, like Trump, like, you know, like what, so what, what happened here was, you know, a huge logical leap that just, you know, skipped every step in between that should have been done as an evaluation to understand, you know, the potential impact of the candidates on the economy. Because Trump, you know, he has been really good, I guess. I guess his tactic of lying to you and talking about being concerned about inflation and the inflation Biden is supposedly causing and everything it has been really good at hoodwinking a lot of you and misdirecting your anger onto, you know, Kamala. But you know what? Trump's policy proposals will, you know, the estimations that I'm seeing are, are, are will cause 9% nine, nine, 9 inflation for each of them, which means that, you know, if you add both raising the tariffs and export, deporting people, we're talking more like probably like 18%. Like, this guy is not going to help. He's not going to make it better. You know, I know that the official inflation numbers exclude, you know, food and, en and energy. But like when when I look at, which is exactly what we've been seeing the cost, you know, of late, you know, go through the roof. But, you know, if, if, if each of them, I would just say that like energy to the energy grid still to a huge extent depends on Saudi Arabia and OPEC, you know, which is, you know, which is all based in, in, in one of the most unstable regions in the world, you know, like, like how, how often do, does a Saudi oil field burn and some civil unrest that takes place over, over there. And, you know, like, or some of the oil fields in the Middle East and, and on the, on the other side of things, you know, we, you know, America, America has been shooting itself in the foot for a very long time by not going over to EVs either, because, you know, this resistance and this stick in the mud attitude about technological change towards, you know, electric vehicles has really been dumb because of the fact that like for our geopolitical interest, you know, to, 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 to keep this addiction, the oil is, is, fucking dumb like i, I like it, it belly it, it belly's all imagination to make it so that people don't don't get this particular aspect of it like with all the fucking bullying of prius owners and everything like it just <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> like please god my people are so stupid they don't they don't fucking know what they're doing <laughs> like it's it's sad like like here here how 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 is America able to get away with this bullshit? I mean, we we talk about American values, virtues, and and, and everything else. How are the politicians able to get away with this garbage? You know, they t they talk up and down about it, and this, you know, they talk about how Saddam Hussein is evil, and these regimes down there in Cuba are wicked and the Venezuelans are wicked and capitalism and the glory of all of it and all this stuff and you know, and American values and virtues and the virtues of hard work and all this other, you know, stuff. And then they have us completely addicted to a substance that the whole fucking planet is using 
to put our balls in a vice grip and, you know, force us to come and negotiate with them on their terms and, you know, surrender to their crooked values. To blackmail the United States into submission to their whims. Yeah, we're addicted to that black oil shit. That black gold shit. You know, like, it, it is... The white gold, you know, it might not be entirely environmentally friendly, but, you know, for reasons of national security, we should be embracing it to a much greater extent. You know, as far as lithium is concerned, like, just, I mean, I've gone on the record to say that I support the Thacker Patch they pass thing, and I hope they send the National Guard in to clear the resistance out of Thacker Pass. Like, you're going to put your body on the line while we're going to have it forcefully removed. We don't care. You know, so, you know, when I, um, you know, he, he said one of the dumbest things that I think I've ever heard, which is, you know, essentially you, you don't fix nature by destroying nature. And I, I couldn't help but read that and think, listen, you dumb motherfucker. All right. As a, let me just explain this to you. This is not a difficult concept to grasp. Thacker Pass and what exists in it is not relevant for the great for the broader ecosystem of the planet. Like that region could turn into a dead zone and the whole rest of the earth would be completely unaffected. I'm sorry, but it's true. The thing is, the thing the thing of the matter is that Right now, the thing to be worried about as far as the climate crisis is concerned and when it comes to issues of man-made global warming, you know, tough decisions may have to be made in the future about what to prioritize as far as what we can save and everything as far as all this is concerned. And if tough decisions need to be made about prioritization, about things to be saved, the focus needs to start with the oceans. Life began in the ocean, and if it fails, it will start to fail there first, you know, and then trickle out to the rest of us. So, you know, what you need to understand is that 40% of the phytoplankton have already been di- have already died because of the changing ocean conditions. That That isn't, you know, yet a crisis, but it's concerning because they produce like 80 to 90% of the world's, you know, oxygen supply. So if, the, if those die, like, you know, oxygen becomes a very scarce resource, you know, you know, we, there just will not be enough of it at all without them. They are the literal lungs of the planet and we are killing them with this warming planet. Like, so I know that what happens with lithium is that some of those extraction ponds get infected and then animals come and drink it and everything and end up dead. But it's no big fucking deal. If a fucking desert emu drinks that fucking water and ends up dead, it's not a fucking big deal in the broader scheme of the planet. What would be as if you killed off the phytoplankton because they are fucking keystone species, you know, in fact, they are the keystone of keystones. Like, you kill them, everything goes with them. They are the linchpin. You know, they are the singular point of failure for all of life on the entire planet. Like, they die out, they go extinct, all life goes extinct with them. Everything dies. So, we have bigger shit to worry about than what happens to the environment out in Thacker Pass. I'm sorry, but if you call yourself an environmentalist, you should understand how the fucking planet works. You should understand what the bigger priority is. And saving the ocean is infinitely more important to the utterly irrelevant and immaterial Thacker Pass.